Hello and welcome to my channel EV Talk. My name is Sly and I'd like to provide you with a little bit of information on the Zappy 2. Now the reason I want to do this is because I've been reading in various forums that people are considering getting a semi cheapy a quasi copy not not a copy in its looks but in copy in what it does apparently significantly cheaper and from what I'm reading they haven't been happy they it's been working in its basic functions, but in the main promise of what this is supposed to do, that is scavenge excess solar and provide it to the car and not pull from the grid. Now, think about um, a, a live situation where we've got plenty of solar coming down and uh, plenty of juice to go to the car. Uh, depending on how big your solar inverter is, that'll be the limit, of course, of what you can send to the car. But now let's say either cloud passes over or you consume more in the household. Now you have less power available to go to the car. The main function of these kind of charges is that they slow down the charge to the car so that you don't have to pull that excess power from the grid. Very important function. And we thought, yeah, OK, well, there's a few on the market that can do that. We've heard about this one years ago and we heard of its development and we heard that it does the job well. So we thought we're going to go with this one, despite the fact that there were rumours of cheaper versions coming out on the market. Well, I'm glad we did because it's not only met our expectations, but it's far exceeded it. And that is largely or at least largely in part, if you know what I mean, like a big part due to the installer who gave us the heads up and said, this SAPI can be used for more than just what we wanted it to do. And it has become the central point of reference in our house for us to understand what's going on with our consumption from the grid, our solar generation, uh, our consumption in the home. And we know we could get it to do a lot more than that. Now, by way of explanation, I'm going to show you the app that is running live at the moment and is sampling our Zappy. So let's have a look at the app. But it's nighttime right now. We're not generating any solar. This is where we would show what solar we're generating. Over here is showing what our house is consuming. And the house is pretty quiet at the moment, so we're not consuming a great deal. Because it's nighttime and we have to run the house, we have to pull from the grid. Here, it's showing us what we're pulling from the grid. We've got the car set at the moment into what's called Eco Plus mode, which means it will only ever charge the car if there's excess solar. That is excess beyond what we need to consume in the house. We can look at that and look at the history. There's a few settings there, which I won't go into right now. But we can look at the charge history down here. Now let's have a look at last week, for example. This particular week, we've only charged the car Monday and Friday. In weeks and months gone past, we would do it every day and top it up every day. But we had things going on where we've had to do some experiments because we've had issues with the design of the charging of our 12 volt battery that I've been testing. And so I haven't been plugging it in a full charge. But if we look at last month, and this is live, so it's gathering data right now from the Zappy and providing us information, we can see the total that we put in at any one time. Now, interestingly here, we've got a car that's got a 60 kilowatt battery. And we typically would only put in four kilowatts or less, and usually two and a half to three kilowatts. And that is enough to keep us topped up Constantly, we're pretty much at 100% all the time. We have 6.6 .6 kilowatts of panels on the roof, a 5 kilowatt inverter, and we have more than enough to run our household and to run our electric car. But this is just one little piece of information, and this is built into the Zappy. You'd expect to have this information. What I didn't expect to have was this, for example. And this is, remember, in the car charger. But we're getting information on what our house consumes with daily, monthly, annual reports. Here we are. 
So we can see here just today, this was our consumption in the household. Now, with that information, you can do some planning. You can also help to cut costs by figuring out what it is you're consuming and at what time of day you're consuming it. So I won't go into the historical graphs. I think you're getting an idea of what that is. But let's look at solar generation. This is just a single day. Now you can see we've clamped here. We've had a very bright sunny day today, clipped I should say, bright sunny day. So we've actually nipped a little bit off the top because we only have a five kilowatt inverter. We have 6.6 .6 kilowatts of panels. Once we hit five, it's gonna clip. So what have we done, let's say, this month? And look at that. We get a very steady solar generation and we can, look at any one day let's look at hmm, let's look at the second of why not i don't know i haven't i haven't prepared this earlier but you can see it on any one day you can see what it is that you're doing you can see your start shoulder here your end um, and how much in a day now look at that with 6.6 .6 kilowatts of panels we're generating 40.8 very efficient so not to dwell on this, let's go. Now, I'm going to go back and say this once, one, once more. This is not what we're looking at, the solar inverter. This is the car charger. And the car charger is showing us everything. What are we pulling in, pulling in from the grid? Now, this is a lovely little graph all by itself because here in yellow, it shows us what we're delivering to the grid and we are sending a bucket load to the grid. And remember, I didn't consume that with the charger much in the last couple of days. So every day we've been doing this and sending a bucket load to the grid. Nice to see that. But now what if we want to see it all in one place? That's right here, right in the middle. So if we click on that, this is where you see a lovely view of where everything's coming in and going out. Whoops, sorry about that. Coming in and going out um, with a lovely colorful presentation. I want you just to see what's possible. Uh, you'll be able to, if you pause this, you'll be able to look at this and work out what's going on here. But let me come down to the graph. And again, this is showing us everything we want to know. Right, now, if we have a look at the colors that are used as a key, Import is 6.7, sorry, import is red at 6.7. Our consumed energy is 6.3, and our exported is in yellow. So that's the leftover that we're sending out to the grid. So if you've got a still a healthy feed in tariff, multiply that by what you're seeing here every day, and you'll work out how much money you'll be paid to be providing this out to the grid. But have a look at this graph. This shows it beautifully. So whilst we are consuming energy at home in the green, we still have enough leftover energy to export to the grid, right? Export to the grid in yellow. So our consumption here, exporting to the grid here, and either side of where we're generating solar, here's our consumption. So things that we have idle in the house, of course, up to um, about 6.30 in the morning, we're consuming from the grid here. We're importing power. And at night time, we have cooking going on, we have entertainment going on and so on. That is pulled from the grid. We don't have a battery. Now, what if we did? Can this car charger and all the information that this car charger can provide, can that also give us information about a battery? Well, an example right here, I've just pulled this from the web, but notice the extra elements that are shown here. Yes. There's a battery. There's a hot water heater. And the rest is the same. This one I can't read. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to see what that is. <laughs> but it's almost unending what this thing can do. And of course, it can present it all on a common page. Now, I don't know of any of the cheaper solar aware chargers that are out there that can provide this uh, amount of information, this cohesive information, all in one place. And I've got to tell you, the pain of the extra payment that you have to pay for the Zappy 2 is quickly forgotten. When you have this functionality, this reliability, this cleanliness and this professionalness, 
Is that a word? Professionalness? Just professionalism in presentation. You're really getting what you pay for. So look, that's all I'm trying to tell you. Uh, be aware. You're going to get more than what you expect with the Zappy 2. So this is Sly from Every Talk. Thank you very much for listening. And please, you know, I haven't asked for this before, but I'd like you to consider now to subscribe. I'm starting to get some very good information from my audience. Um, the metrics that I'm getting are showing that people are listening to this from all over the world. And I really would now like to, I guess, take a bit more of an account of it. And I'm going to plan on providing some special content uh, for my subscribers. I really don't know what that's going to be. I'm still very new at this, but I'm going to do my best to provide valid information to those that are interested in this kind of content. So once again, thank you for listening. And this is Sly from EV Talk signing off.